comes movement. Try moving over towards me. Next is wall running. Try running up that cliff. If you run straight toward it, you'll be able to run up the side of it. Good. Looks like you know how to control your chakra properly. Now I'll tell you about chakra jumps. You can use those to jump even farther distances. a wide valley, just use a wire kunai. You can use a recovery if it seems like you're going to fall off the cliff, so don't forget. All right, next. I'm going to teach you how to attack. All right, try attacking your opponent now. The key to attacking is to always keep an eye on your opponent. And on the battlefield, losing sight of your opponent is akin to suicide. Always keep this in mind. Throwing kunai is a good way to hit far away enemies. Now, you'll need to protect your body when your enemy attacks. Do this by guarding. Guard in order to withstand your opponent's attacks and create openings. Now, you should know that you also have the ability to deflect enemy attacks while guarding. Don't forget to predict your opponent's moves and dodge when you can. there's not enough time to guard or dodge. Remember that you can always just use a substitution jutsu. After using the jutsu, you can take a moment to think and plan your counterattack. Go! 
Let's continue our training. Ninjutsu. As you probably know, Ninjutsu can be activated by channeling chakra. The effects of each jutsu widely vary. Some jutsu are made for dealing damage, while others can be used to impair opponent's abilities or to freeze them in place. Finding a ninjutsu that best fits your own fighting style is the key to attaining victory. Aside from basic ninjutsu, we also have secret techniques. In order to activate a secret technique, one needs a large amount of chakra. But be aware that these techniques are much stronger than normal ninjutsu. Use your chakra, wait for the right time, then aim and fire. Well, that's it for basic training. Now, just don't forget to practice. Good work, and keep on doing your best. <laughs>